Hello, people of the internet. My name is Preston, the programmer here at Leafy Games. And I'm George, the artist. As you can see uh, before you, there's uh, we're actually going to make a slight change to the uh, format of our devlogs. We're going to try and list out all the topics beforehand um, to give you an idea of what we're going to be discussing in the video. Uh, we're pretty excited to uh, discuss these topics, so uh, let's get started. All right, so fuel capsules. Basically, they're... Um, expendable or consumable items that your ship uses when you warp to new sectors. You can see it's called jump fuel, fuel capsules, it shows you the number, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, before, uh, for those of you who've watched the devlogs and played the game, you know that on the, uh, science, on the computer screen, programs only charge when you go to an undiscovered sector. Uh, that was originally the plan because we didn't want to uh, have people just jumping back and forth between two sectors to charge all their programs. Um, but you guys have spoken, you guys didn't like that. <laughs> and so our new system is simply you have to buy fuel so um, you can uh, you can do that and you know but, but it's gonna cost money so it's not like you're not cheating the game or anything like that. Um, and to do that you can just open the trading window. It's still very early we're gonna actually overhaul this very soon and you can see your current fuel and the captain can buy 10 fuel capsules or buy one um, and any order like that. So we're pretty uh, pretty happy about it. It's, it's pretty straightforward, um, but you can use this to jump to new sectors, and you can uh, charge your programs with this per jump. And when you're in a pinch, there's also an extra thing you can do. You can basically, you know, times of dire need, you can actually expend a fuel capsule without jumping at this station right here. It's a manual program charging station. So if you really need to charge a program right now, it's like really serious, you can go over here and you can load a fuel capsule and you can see the capsule right there. It says capsule ready and just hit this thing. It's still pretty early. There'll be more effects in the future. But this will actually charge. It'll basically be like you just did a, a basically just jump to a new sector on your on the on the program screen. Uh, anything any programs that are uncharged in the charging bay will get uh, charge points. Um, so you can uh, you can do this and uh, uh, there's a lot more to come in the future with this like probably like you know there's gonna be a cooldown and a few other things to expect but that's the, the general idea we're pretty happy with it um, and uh, we're, we're excited to see what you guys think there's a lot more like what happens when you run out of fuel and my brother will go over that right now hello everyone I'm gonna go over some of the new features including a distress signal so once we added fuel, we ran into a little bit of a conundrum where uh, you could run out and be just totally stuck in a sector because you couldn't kill anything to get credits or you couldn't buy fuel, you, you were just hopeless. So we added a system uh, to help sort of uh, control that. That's the distress signal system. Uh, it's right here. It's available on the engineer uh, coolant screen uh, right next to the fuel. So, so how does this work? What, what does it do? The, the general idea is that there's several different signatures you can emit. These are extremely long range, and so other, pick, other ships can pick them up. Um, and there's different types, and each one can have slightly different uh, effects. Uh, for example, general distress uh, perhaps could um, cause a line of gentlemen or people looking to pick off uh, someone in, you know, that needs help. You know, to salvage them or destroy them, or uh, for example, the the WD cruiser has a cruiser has a WD uh, signature. Um, if you potentially abuse that or or, uh, or buy it, equip it on your ship that's not WD, because um, these are fully equipable, you will be able to buy and 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 uh, swap these out. So not currently, but it's a future thing. Not currently, it's something. Yeah, it's not something you buy at any old regular store. Um, they're probably going to be mission related or special items special things you can get um, but we're pretty cool we're pretty happy with it I can go ahead and uh, enable it so it goes green or sorry red and uh, you can hear it going off so now that it's on oh we got pretty lucky and uh, it seems a ship uh, has warped in in fact it's a fuel trading ship uh -oh. <laughs> and now an enemy is oops I left it on so um, you can't leave it on. It won't keep spawning ships forever. I think two is the limit, but uh, 
there is a chance if you leave it on for more ships to come. So, um, in this case, this guy is after me. So, uh, just get that ready. But uh, I can actually buy fuel from this guy. So, this is all very, very early, but uh, if I was out of fuel, I could go ahead and buy it for 800 credits, which isn't a very good deal. This guy's, yeah, he's not giving you a great deal. <laughs> Um, but uh, in, in times of dire need, you know, anything is good. So I went ahead and bought it. You can do it once, spent 800 credits. I got myself some fuel. Looks like we were uh, a little bit of an attack going. I still have more things to show you. So we'll just get lined up. These guys don't. So there's, a, there's also a new screen here, as you're probably noticing. This is the auxiliary reactor configuration. This enables you to turn off and on various systems in your ship, and these are all connected to your auxiliary reactor, which is sort of an invisible reactor that, is, that uh, powers some of these essential ships' systems. For example, oxygen generation. I turn that off, and you'll notice, well, we're actually using oxygen now because it's no longer being produced. I can turn it on and, and there we go. So you might also notice that something changed here. Power allocation has changed somewhat. So what it's actually doing is giving our uh, our reactor 800 extra terajoules here um, of power. So we can use that. Of course, we lose oxygen to gen during this, but uh, we gain some extra power that could potentially be used in combat in a, a desperate battle or something. Um, there's, there's, there's a whole ton of these. Not all of them are functional. Um, I believe atrium healing uh, is functional. Oxygen gen is. Climate control, this will be um, something like temperature control. We do plan on implementing something like this in the future. Um, we're not sure exactly yet. It doesn't do anything right now, so you might as well just turn it off. Uh, spotlights, these control the, the spotlights on your turret and your ship. Ship security doesn't currently do anything. This will probably be related to Stuff like onboard turrets and intruder automatic uh, intruder detection. Cyber defense. Currently, this isn't hooked up. But this will control your cyber defense processor uh, power allocation. So with it off, uh, you're potentially a lot more vulnerable to viruses. This currently is not implemented either. So just you can theoretically just leave it off. There's no difference. Uh, you turn to turret lights, disable power and notifications. These are also not implemented. Um, these are ship notifications that uh, about extremely relevant information. The ship will basically announce it both in the, in the chat um, and potentially with some sort of voice. Uh, so that is something that we want out of the future. So, um, so, oh, so yeah, some of these things work, some of them don't. Uh, but over time, we will add them all. Hey, do you want to do that cool thing where you run all right down the? Uh... Yeah. So we have. Uh, we like we like the screen for just this type of stuff. You can just sort of flip it. Like, it's like a, I don't know, like a fuse box or something. Or it has that sort of nice mechanical feeling. I, I like it a lot. We hope you guys uh, dig it and uh, get that sense of getting every last bit of power in the middle of combat at you know potential risk in the future. You could potentially risk you know suffocating <laughs> or getting a virus or or whatever so we think it's really cool really cool risk reward system we hope you guys like it and we definitely have a lot more we have it we have a lot of plans for this going forward okay so um let's talk about the new reactor because we have a new mesh for it as well as the coolant screen and a few other things so this is the new engine room the fancy new reactor you can actually see the reactor core doing its business right there and in fact if you actually modify the usage um the reactor actually changes. You can see it gets brighter, you know? And a few other things happen later on. <laughs> we'll get to. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so reactor coolant. Uh, before, if, you, if you're if you overheating, the only thing you could really do is just r remove power from the system. But if you really didn't want to do that, or if you wanted to, to delay uh, doing that, you could use coolant to help you in that uh, quest. 
So currently it's off. This is your coolant reserves. You just you can turn it to low, and you can see it very slowly starts to take away at your reserves. And uh, this will keep the core temperature nice and uh, you know nice and cold. Uh, although you know depending on the reactor and a certain amount of usage, it yeah, won't you can it, swap out the uh, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll actually install a weaker reactor uh, relative to the components we have installed. As you can see, the actual usage changed, and this is all relative to the the most powerful thing we have, so that's shield. So it's pretty cool. You can actually see uh, we're using 100% of the usage of this reactor, and you can see the core temperature is is just kind of really rising, even though we have reserves on on uh, low. So we'll just turn it on high, and you can see finally we're we're uh, dropping back down. So this is kind of a uh, delicate dance. You want to make sure you don't run out of reserves. Um, but it's a it's a cool we think it's pretty cool if you wanted to buy more coolant you can just do it at the trading stations uh, you can buy five liters up to 500. Um, oh, once again this is all very early and uh um, we'll get we'll get better in the future okay so um we'll uh, just bring down the usage this is actually something you can never do before you can never actually modify the total usage of uh, of a system so um, yeah, this is part of those, the reactor screen improvements of this update. There's also been some networking improvements too that uh, I hope you guys, you guys will appreciate. Yeah, like before, uh, when you would move these sliders, it would be very uh, flickery and um, it would move all over the place. Do you want to explain talk more about that? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, well we just made some small changes that should reduce that effect uh, or eliminate it entirely. So basically it just stops uh, updating itself in certain ways uh, soon after you've edited it. So it takes your new value above uh, the server sending an old value or something. But uh, yeah, it should, should hopefully feel a little bit better. The auxiliary reactor screen also has this uh, functionality. So each of these switches is individually uh, keeping track of the last time it was edited and uh, keeping the networking nice and smooth so that you don't see it flicker back and forth as it, you know, gets your input and sends it to the server and the server sends it back and you send it. So it should be a lot smoother now. And also, um, something that was kind of annoying but is now fixed, the reactor screen wouldn't uh, always update uh, unless you actually, like, directly looked at it. <laughs> and as you can see now, it updates perfectly. So we're pretty happy about that. And you can actually see the total usage going up because we're routing all of our auxiliary reactor. We're boosting the uh, the output of the main reactor by 3,200 terajoules. So it's pretty awesome. And that will actually also, in case <laughs> you're wondering, this will actually make it so that you're using not your 100% usage. So this can actually is another clever way to cool the reactor down if you wanted to. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know, give you give you more push, you know, for it. So we're pretty excited about that. Any more improvements? Oh yeah, like you know, just in general. Uh, do you want to talk about some some of the stuff going on behind the scenes with uh, these bars? Well, um, it's much like before. I mean, um, it's allocating power. I mean, you can edit the, as you can see. You can limit the total usage to limit. Uh, usage across all the things. If you if you were allocating power to multiple things, like if your weapons weren't fully charged, your shields weren't full, um, you would see a more interesting layout of power as it uses the proportions of your different ratios. Like, um, yeah, looks like your oxygen. Yeah, going I'm down. gonna turn the oxygen back on. Uh, but uh, you can try like you know, um, hurting yourself somehow. Or, yeah. Okay. Uh, or, or I'll, I'll go but, ram into something. You can see a little bit of the proportions there, but it works the same as before. Just it, essentially, the total limit gets applied uh, before everything else. And so, even if you set uh, more specific limits, it might actually not reach those. But it will use those as ratios. So, if you have weapons to full, or you have weapons to 100%, shields to 50, shields will get 50% of the power that weapons do. So, even when you modify, like, that ratio is relative. Sorry but, if that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, as, as you can see, there you go, yeah. uh, by, li by these limiting acting as the ratio for limited power, so, okay, darn it, the shields came back, but you saw it for a second there. Um, <laughs> we're pretty 
pretty excited about that. Well, we're kind Hopefully, of... it gives a nice, nicer experience to uh, engineers everywhere. Absolutely. So, um, we have a few other things to talk about with this new reactor. Uh, I, I actually lo love it when it's dark. <laughs> um, so, turn all on. Maybe you can keep that off. <laughs> you can see, uh, yeah, the lights really, uh, you know, increases when in the reactor usage. And we, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of the reactor. <laughs> Um, okay, so, so there's a, a few other indirect changes, like this slowly begins to turn red when it's overheating. Oh yeah, I can turn off uh, uh, the coolant and uh, <laughs> it'll overheat faster. Uh, just as before, if you overheat your reactor, it shuts off for uh, a short while as it rapidly cools. Um, but that leaves you sort of dead in the water and very susceptible to all sorts of nasty things out there in space. So, as it just did right now. So if you wanted to avoid this, if you're really in like a sticky situation, maybe you're out of coolant, you're using all this stuff and you're still about to overheat and you just need to know, you just need that extra few, like 10 seconds or something to beat this sector commander or whatever you're fighting, you can disable the core safety. So this is the, this is the safety system that actually shuts down everything automatically. And you can already see we're already in heat critical. Everything's turning red. We're still, uh, core temperature is still slowly rising. And this thing is actually beginning to shake, you know? <laughs> I absolutely love all these little details. It's, um, but uh, we must warn you, you, if you stay in this heat critical stage for long enough, the reactor will become, will start to melt down. And at that point, you have to run. You have to basically eject it. Yeah, yeah show them this, yeah. Pull that switch. <laughs> uh, you, can only, you can only pull that switch when it's about to overheat. I'm afraid of overheating. Oh shoot, okay. So we're, we flip the switch, the core is being ejected. We have to get out of here. Oh, darn it, okay, I forgot. We have to reroute power from the auxiliary reactor in order to actually power the engines, because uh, there's no reactor anymore. Oh my goodness, it's right here. This is not a good place. This is not good. They're not nearly fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good night. <laughs> Oh. Okay, okay. <laughs> this is obviously a, a, a bit more smoother when you have a pilot and an engineer who can uh, reduce power to science in order to give more power to engineering. Um, you can kind of see that's what happens if you don't get far, uh, far enough away fast enough or if you just let it overheat. If you let the, the reactor core melt down yeah. without ejecting it, it'll just rip the ship apart so we're pretty excited uh, to see those dynamics and once again it's probably still going to require uh, balancing in the future you know tweaking the time is like how long can you be in a heat critical state before it, it melts down all those things are on the table for change you know for being changed in the future well we'll have to see what you guys think about those things and i think that mostly covers it yeah, um, I just wanted to talk really quickly about a little bit of our future plans moving into uh, with the Unity's 5 beta coming out. Um, so we have been playing around with it. We have been, um, we do have access and we have been, uh, we do have a version of Pulsar that's running in Unity 5, sort of <laughs> running. Uh, but still, there's still going to be, there's going to be some work to do to convert everything over and make it work. But our initial tests were pretty promising. Um, and we definitely hope to leverage some of the new features. Um, and uh, it looks like there's going to be some performance increases as well, which um, I'm very happy with, of course. Um, and all sorts of increases. There's a, there's a new uh, way to handle uh, camera rendering um, and really get in depth on that, which I'm super excited about. That's something I've been wanting uh, for a long time. Um, so there's some really cool features, and uh, we're excited to to start getting them in, um, and we're going to be moving forward uh, with a public public version of Pulsar. We'll move forward when we feel it's ready. Um, we're going to basically just keep testing Unity 5 um, until we get to a point where, hey, it feels feels like it's stable enough, it's ready uh, for you guys to play and use and, and uh, experience. So, uh, very exciting stuff. We're happy to finally have it and be starting to play with it and see our future uh, 
unfold, um, what kind of stuff we're going to do. Uh, we're also going to be doing some sound effects and audio upgrades, some pretty massive ones uh, in the near future with UE5 as well. So uh, exciting stuff. Just just wanted to cover that real quick. Um, this the version 0.42, the engineer update. We're moving to the latest stable version of 4.5. Which should help with uh, some of the Linux mouse weirdness um, and some other some other stuff we've been dealing with. Um, but yeah, thanks for thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you.